meeting to order. Um, could I get a copy of the agenda or the secret to logging in? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, first, uh, I mean, everyone knows everyone, right? We do have a new commissioner, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, you want to introduce yourself? Okay. I'm Chi and welcome. And even I was the area. Oh, wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. Thank so you. glad to have you on the, the commission. Okay, um, I'm Ann Rhodes. I'm the, I'm the chair. First item is entry level police officer testing. Well, we prepared a memo, um, yep. and so just to kind of briefly recap, uh, almost exactly a year ago, last September, we came to the commission and requested approval to kind of transition to an ongoing rolling cycle testing process, right. and we wanted to, we asked um, for approval to try that for a year mm -hmm. to see how it goes to, um, with the goal of providing maybe a more efficient um, recruitment and testing, and also kind of more timely um, opportunities for recruitment and testing for candidates too. So there wasn't such a delayed um, time between right. cycles for certification of the list. And we have completed two full cycles over that year. We're actually at the point where we would do a, another. Um, and so we are coming back given that that trial period is over and basically seeking approval to continue it on an ongoing basis. Uh, um, I'll let the chief speak for himself, but from an HR standpoint, we really feel like we accomplished what we wanted to in terms of gaining some efficiencies in terms of staff time, um, you know, reliance on, on outside facilities, you know, just all of the above. And it really has given us some flexibility in allowing candidates to come in and test when it is convenient for them as opposed to having to make a one-time big group testing mm -hmm. event work for them. So we, we would like to continue moving forward. Um, and I don't know if the chief has anything that he wants to I, add. I've been tickled with how successful it's been. I really think we are the gold standard now in the county for uh, the process. Um, one of the major barriers that Karen alluded to was it, it was just so infrequent. And when there's this much pressure on all agencies in the area to hire, right. um, any barrier we can remove is uh, is very beneficial towards us. So it's really worked out well for us. It, we're much more nimble. Mm -hmm. um, it Instead of it being a, a giant process, the HR folk really do a good job of getting people through the process. And I, and I think that it's really helped with our numbers. We're, yeah. we're Currently, we're at the highest we've been since uh, since I've been here, and I think that's a, attributed to the, the the new process. So it's been fantastic. It strikes me that it's been very successful, and that it's a big advantage to candidates too. Yeah, might help us recruit. Yeah, yeah, that's the hope. And we did include, you know, we always give the EEO statistics right. reports, and so we provided the report from our last kind of traditional process right mm -hmm. where um we had the one weekend event and then we we included the reports from the two that we did under this trial period and i think what we've learned from comparing those is that we haven't lost anything right if anything um we're maintaining and maybe even making some small gains with re regards to to diversity so um we certainly at this point i think with a year under our belts are not seeing any downsides um, to, to moving forward in this manner. Well, I move approval to make this process permanent and do whatever you need to do to get all of the paperwork in order to be consistent with this. Can we have time for questions here? Sure, yeah, okay. go ahead. Um, well, I guess I think you alluded to the first question I had is, is there any negative impacts at all from the changes that were made last year? Not that I've identified, no. No. And for the oral interview, what's the process for identifying a community member to participate in that process? Well, we've we've used the same one lately, just because it's it's worked out well for us. But we we're, we have a diversity focus, so we, we've been using Kevin Sanders from the NAACP, and he's been a good partner with us. So our, our focus has typically been trying to get some diversity in the community because that's been a focus of our recruitment lately. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how are you doing it, the diversity initiative you have? How are you bringing people in? Well, one of the things, we had a diver we had a, recruitment com a recruiting committee on the department, and we highlighted the diversity that we do have within the department. If you look at our videos, you will you should notice that. And I think it's helped. I think it's paid off in our numbers. You'll see in the agenda that I think we're getting closer and closer to representing more representing our community. Yeah. 
one of the things that that committee focused on was preparation of some materials that they would be able to keep on hand um, in the cars. So as uh, staff are out in the community making contacts, having interactions with, with folks within the community, they're able to talk about employment opportunities with the department and provide them with some general information. So they're able to make those point in time contacts. And now that we are accepting applications all the time, rather than say, let us know if you're interested and we'll let you know when we're accepting applications applications they're able to direct them to how they can apply immediately and we're testing more frequently so hopefully folks that are interested are not being lost just due to the passage of time we do lose folks to other agencies because it's so competitive but being able to provide them opportunities that are more timely I think makes the contacts that the officers are making in the community more effective. Is that fair, Chief? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I've never seen any female um, police officer in the area. So. Okay. <laughs> sure. Other questions or discussion? Okay. I made a motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, police department promotional testing. Okay, we sorry we loaded you guys up with the memo. So um, for promotional testing, we did have promotional lists. Those are only good for two years under state code, and they actually expired last March. We've kind of held off because there hasn't been any pending uh -huh. departures that would require us to to make an appointment from those lists. But we are anticipating the need to make some some promotional appointments um, around the first of the year. So we need to get lists in place. So this is just part of the the natural life cycle of the promotional list. The proposal that is before you is essentially the same process that we have used in the past. I think that we're comfortable with that process. Um, we would propose using um, Jeff Kaler as a consultant to come in and facilitate assessment centers for all promotional ranks again. He has um, been involved in our process the last several um, cycles and I think that we have all um, been very satisfied with with the work that he does and the folks that he brings in from the outside the one change that we did make is at the that we are proposing is at the sergeant rank we used to use a written test for the sergeant and then combined that with an assessment center um, one written exams are, are getting a little bit more difficult to come by but two we also we were originally using that written test as a tool to reduce the assessment center candidate pool to what we felt was a manageable number that seems to be unnecessary now and so we feel like maybe rather than just doing a written test and requiring them to pass it it would be more effective to do a panel interview similar to what we would do for other first line supervisory first time supervisor um, roles within the city because that is how the sergeant functions within the police department and combine that assessment with the assessment center that will have more of the technical um, direct police related kind of um, exercises that will be um, evaluated by outside assessors so um, otherwise the lieutenant and the captain process is the same as what was recommended and approved in the past which would combine an assessment center with interview panels all graded all weighted ultimately you do have to achieve a minimum passing score in the overall process and the final ranking of the promotional list would be determined solely by that passing <coughs> score. So I don't know if you have questions about any of that but are there usually plenty of people interested in the promotion process it seems like in my experience this will be my first one here yeah. but even at my former agency it's less and less and yeah. I'm not I'm not sure why I don't know if that's because of compression on the pay scales or people less willing to take on that liability I'm not sure mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're gonna find out I'm, I'm really mm -hmm. curious about that but just anecdotally hearing what I'm hearing I, I don't think we're going to be inundated That's with great. candidates so um, we, yeah we, we really have just in the past had the consideration of wanting to manage the size of the sergeant pool because okay it's such a large potential pool of candidates, right? Mm -hmm. If you meet the educational requirements and have three years on the department, all officers would be included in that. And uh -huh. so, um, but I think our experience has shown us that we've probably had around 10 
ish 10 12 candidates participate in the past which is certainly sufficient um, to create a, a list that's been usable for the period of time we have always gotten really really positive feedback on the quality of our candidates from the assessors that come in um, they're always commenting on how impressed they are by the, by the caliber of employees that Iowa City um, police and fire have so um, and I don't think it'll be a huge pool but they're always I think I think that we'll have a good pool and, we, and we're very comfortable that we'll be able to get a, a, a very high quality and usable list at the end of the process do we lose officers because there's a lack of promotional opportunity do they go to other agencies for um, I'm sure that could be um, on some people's mind, but you've got to understand our, who we're competing against for. Yeah. I mean, we're the biggest agency in the county, right. so there are more opportunities in Iowa City. Now, we can't compete with Cedar Rapids or Des Moines, yeah. but that's a big step. But someone who, considering going to the county or going to North Liberty or something, we have many more opportunities, so that's okay. an advantage that we do have. Okay, great. That's helpful. Okay, um, Chief, any comments on this? No, I think Karen summed it up perfectly. The, the change is, and, and it's a change for me too, I've been on both sides of these processes and I went through many written exams and mm -hmm. I know in my experience that was just kind of a winnowing down process and I'm not sure how much value that added. Mm -hmm. So we'll try it out yeah. this way and see how well it works and then, and then we'll revisit it again if, mm -hmm. on the next process. Well, it kind of tracks with the nationwide tendency to not have faith in written mm -hmm. assessments and standardized tests mm -hmm. so that makes a lot of sense um, I want to commend you on the the quality of your memos oh, <laughs> very, <laughs> very <thank> clear <laughs> very informative <laughs> thank you well prepared for the meeting and uh, this makes sense to me um, is there a motion for approval but I do have a quick question and that is has Kaylor weighed in Kaler Associates, have they weighed in on the testing aspect of the promotional process? Have we talked to them? On about? the use of a written test? Yes. We haven't asked them to weigh in on that. Okay. Yeah. I guess if, if we're using Kaler for the promotional testing, um, is I guess part of that would be a question for them is, is that something that they consider necessary or is that something that they think really is just kind of a, a wash anyway? Yeah, we, ha we haven't asked Jeff for an opinion on that and we're not suggesting that we're using him to kind of oversee the, the entirety of the process. He's coming in to do the assessment center okay. portion of it, right? Um, and so we have always I don't know that we have ever, maybe for, maybe at one time for a lieutenant, we used assessment center only. Um, maybe, I'm trying to think, but we've always combined the assessment center with some other tool that we can use um, to, to give candidates an opportunity to be evaluated by a separate group than the assessors that he brings in and in kind of a separate, you know, setting right so which is is the interviews i mean we, we think that 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 what kaler comes in and does is more technical to the actual duties of the police officer officer whatever rank this whatever rank we're testing for so those simulations which are like presentations dealing with staffing situations written i mean they're all very technical we still also want to assess folks as leaders and managers within the larger city organization. And so that's kind of the goal of trying to balance that out. And the assessment centers are weighted more heavily um, because it is a technical role and we want folks with that technical expertise evaluating them. But that's why the um, assessment or the interviews um, are included, percent. right? Yeah. And you will see, I should correct myself, with the exception of the captain. The captain, the assessment centers are weighted the least heavily, but that's also where this is really functioning as more of an administrator, and they have a much bigger role as a leader within the larger city organization. And so that's why we kind of shift away from more of the technical exercises to having them evaluated by senior management type folks. Um, going by what he said, mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking is there a way to have like a promotional survey to find out why they don't want to accept more responsibilities? A, a survey? survey? Yeah, we could we could idea. survey staff at any yeah, time. Absolutely, yeah. that's a good idea. Sure. Yeah, that'd probably be I'm good. I'm really curious. So, um, we're hopeful for ten or twelve applicants. 
I, I'm, I'll be, I'm curious to see if we get there. I hope, I hope we do too. I'm optimistic, yeah. but you know, there's, there's different reasons. <coughs> and it's, it would be good for us to find out what those reasons are, why people might be hesitant. So. Rick, did you have something? No, that's, that's fine. Is there a motion for approval? I would uh, make a motion to Iowa City Human Resources staff to administer panel interviews for the Sergeant, Lieutenant, and Captain promotional process on behalf of the Civil Service Commission. Would that also include to authorize Jeff Kaler to? Yes, that's correct. To, to conduct the assessment centers. Thank you. Is there a second? Yeah. Aye. Great. All, All in favor? Answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Perfect. Aye. <laughs> All right. Motion <laughs> passes. Okay, thank you. Now we move to sales like parallel processes for the fire department. Right. So, um, fire, um, we last certified a hiring list for firefighter in back in 2019. Um, and so we feel like that the life of that list has just exhausted its usefulness. There's been such a passage of time since those candidates were assessed. We have mm -hmm. um, been happy with it, but um, feel that it's time to go back out, recruit a new candidate pool, and create a new list for the chief to use to fill vacancies. So this process does look a little different than what we have recommended and used in the past. And the primary difference, well, there are two. We are recommending the same written assessment that we have used in the past, um, which is the IPMA um, product. We've used that for uh, the last few recruitments. Um, they do have the ability to offer an online testing option at this time. And so we're, we're wanting to give that a, a, a go and see if that might make the process more accessible to candidates. Um, and so what that looks like is, um, we will pay for the service to have the test individually proctored by um, a company that IPMA contracts with for that services and candidates who are able to um, provide the technology required will be able to basically, um, we'll give them a, a, an access code and they'll have a deadline and they'll be able to, to, to take that test um, at their convenience. Um, rather than having to come in and attend a one-time in-person large group testing session, which is what we have done in the past. Um, we still are going to offer that in-person testing session in case someone has technology challenges or just prefers that setting. So we're gonna give them the option and we'll see how it goes, but we are excited about the flexibility that that could afford some candidates, particularly those that may need to travel or may have work or other scheduling conflicts with our um, on-site testing opportunity. The other change, which is more significant, is that what we're recommending to do for the physical fitness testing. In the past, we have used the CPAT test, which is, um, very specific, widely used um, in the fire service, but it does require specialized equipment. There is a very extensive process that's required to administer that appropriately that takes a couple of months to bring folks in for orientation sessions, bring them back a month later for practice sessions, bring them back for the test. Um, and uh, we would like to try something that does not require um, as much time, as much candidate involvement um, to participate in it in the way that it's intended to be used, that does not require use of specialized equipment or training or coaching. Um, so we are recommending that we use the same physical fitness test that we use for our police officer candidates which um, is the, the test that is also used um, as a requirement for entry into ILEA. It involves uh, a run, sit-ups, push-ups, all things that anyone <coughs> should be able to train for, um, practice, and kind of get an, uh, uh, an assessment of their readiness for the test without requiring any type of travel access to equipment or anything like that. Um, and the thinking, it also has uh, pass-fail rates that are established based on sex and age categories, um, which we are hopeful um, could potentially reduce um, any uh, implicit or unintended bias against candidates. Um, and so the thought is that let's use a test that's been proven 
to work to determine a baseline level of fitness for this purpose and then focus on the actual activities and skills that are required um, on the fire scene, focus on those as part of the new recruit training academy that occurs during the probationary period. So um, an opportunity to really train those skills the way that the department wants them to be trained and to allow the folks that are putting candidates through that to make an assessment of whether or not they are capable of kind of learning um, and completing those skills by the time they get to the end of the probationary period. So the hope is again that this will just make it an, a less cumbersome process for candidates primarily, also for staff, and it also will reduce the time frame from application to being able to certify a list. It'll reduce it significantly. It strikes me that the physical requirements for a firefighter might be greater or different than for a police officer. Am I correct or, or not? Perhaps. I mean, I think it depends on what you're doing, right? I mean, for the for the most part, you're not fighting fires on the daily basis, right? I'll right. let the chief speak to that. You know, it, um, the, the actual physical tasks are definitely different. You know, a lot of climbing, crawling. The, Carrying the, heavy stuff. Right, the, the, those types of things. <laughs> Um, the, um, the, 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 the function of the fire academy um, is, is to teach those skills. Okay. You know, how to properly <clears throat> climb a ladder, how, how to, you know, to, to, if somebody needs, you know, to, to work on some core strength on, on carrying heavy items uh, dur during that, you know, eight or ten week period while they're, while they're in training it is to build upon those skills. Um, so I, I, I'm very comfortable with, with um, you know, the, the um, I, ILEA test or the Cooper test that the police department uses to, to, to set, a, set a baseline uh, for the candidate and, and, and then once they get into fire academy really hone in on those job specific skills and, and, and teach them the right way to do the tasks. Um, so I, I think um, while, while the, 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 the physicality can be different at times, um, I, there's probably a little bit more similarity than dissimilarity mm -hmm. um, a, as far as, you know, being able to uh, physically perform any job of public safety. Thank you. That's helpful. And then do you have recertification, or I, I should know this, recertification requirements for the um, physical aspects of firefighting at regular intervals? Uh, there's uh, there's uh, medical physicals every year. Okay. Or, they're, they're, I, I think we're close to every year at this point. Uh, but yes, we have, we have medical physicals on the fire department throughout their employment status. Um, there, there are, we have uh, peer fitness trainers on the fire department that, that concentrate on, on peer fitness. And there, there's uh, fitness assessments uh, that happen uh, uh, twice a year. And, and they're a self-improvement tool so, so that the employee knows exactly where they're at. Um, so, yeah, we're, okay. we're working towards that goal. Good, good information. Thank you. Yeah, but typically the CPAT is something that we've used at, as part of the testing process, and then that specific set of tests ha is not used again, right? You have other tools to, right. to monitor how folks are, are able to perform the competences required and, and all of that. Absolutely. The, the CPAT's a one and done type of test. Right. So, w when the candidate passes the CPAT, that's the last time they're ever going to do that test. Never again are they going to see that test. Kind of like the bar exam for a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pass it once and you're, you're good. Then you're done, right? <laughs> um, it, you know, in, in, in the CPAT world, there, there, there are some time-bound constraints that, that say that a CPAT certificate is good for, I believe it's one year, um, that, that there's some transportability amongst, amongst other agencies. So, you, you, you know, you, you kind of get it into the scenario of, you know, they, they were tested a long time ago at one test, they passed. And then a couple of years have passed by. Um, and, and then they, they actually start on the fire department. So I, I think this is gonna allow us to replicate the, the, um, the, the Cooper test, the test we're proposing, uh, once they get into the fire academy right off the bat, and then build upon job specific training and skills as we go out. Okay, thank you. Hmm? Are there questions, comments? I think I misinterpreted the memo because when I read that, I, I guess I made the assumption is that the physical testing would provide a baseline, but ultimately they would pass a CPAP after, um, you know, during that 
the probationary period process. Seeing it's not the case, who ultimately makes that decision or met that call as to this person is fit, not physically capable of performing these job essential functions of the job? Or not. I mean, who, sure. who be the one that makes that call? So we, we have a training officer at the training facility. There, there, there is a, a job task book that, that's um, uh, based upon uh, NFPA, National Fire Protection Association skills, of, of the job performance requirements. Uh, the candidate or the firefighter can hoist the ladder, you know, climb the ladder, carry these tools, and do these job specific tasks. Um, and, and that is really a function of the fire academy is to teach people to do the skills. Um, CPAT has never been used as an educational tool. It, it's been used as a screening tool. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, what we're proposing is um, not replicating the CPAT. We, we have other pieces in, in, in our uh, training program that, that certainly cover all of those items, um, but not specifically the CPAT. So you know, one of the st one of the uh, components of the CPAT is um, a, a rotating step mill that a candidate gets on. It's like a rotating mm -hmm. staircase, and failure points on that piece are if you touch the handles. Um, I, I would hate I would hate for us not to have an applicant or be successful because they touched handles on, on a rotating staircase. Um, so we're we're uh, that, that, that's that's uh, that's that's where we're at with the CPAD. Uh, so they will not be re replicated during fire academy. This is related. Can you tell me about the pool of applicants? Do you have? I assume it's terribly competitive. Do you have lots of people applying to be firefighters? Um, I, I cannot speak to Iowa City. This will be the first time I've been through, right. a, through a hiring process. Um, in, in the Des Moines metro area where I, where I, where I came from, um, it, the, the numbers have dwindled over the years. Number of applicants? They, they, they have. Um, I, I think it'll be interesting to see here in Iowa City. Um, we, we, our entrance requirements, um, our, our, our uh, you know, high school diploma, you know, 18 years old, and, and some of those things. So. We'll, we'll see. You know, I'll be interested to see if there is a, a, a significant change between, you know, the job requirements over there versus over here to, to enter in the fire service. Okay. But historically, it is a position that has had a, there's been a lot of interest. I mean, yeah, we tested I over so. 100 candidates last time we tested. Um, so, but that was, that was in 2019. Um, so it will be interesting to see what it looks like now. But yes, it has been a competitive process in the past. Okay. What are the technology requirements of the testing, the online testing? Uh, the, uh, for the online testing, in order for it to be proctored appropriately, the candidate has to have a computer with a facing webcam, and then they also have to have a second device like a cell phone with a camera, so essentially they can monitor <coughs> their workspace and verify that they're not using any prohibited materials while completing the online exam. So they basically need to be able to view the candidate at their computer or tablet while taking the test from two views. Okay. Yeah. Other questions or comments? I hate, I hate to circle back. No, but sure. With the uh, CPAT test, I think one of the reasons that we've used, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we've used in the past was it was supported uh, because of previous testing and if we go to a different system of evaluating potential applicants uh, based on their physical ability or inabilities, can that be supported in the same manner that CPAP tests be supported? I believe so. I, I believe so. You know, you know, law, law enforcement's been using this, this test for a, for a number of years. Um, and, and I, I guess I'm not concerned as much about the passing the baseline law enforcement test, but more so the individual training that at, is at the academy mm -hmm. if if somebody were it, if the training officer were to make that uh, assessment and say this person is not physically capable of doing the job would that assessment carry the same weight as the CPAT test for to to support that dismissal um, I, 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 I I'm not sure that they're necessarily related. I, I think that could happen now. 
honestly, Rick, I mean, we've got folks who um, have been hired in this year that took the CPAT three mm -hmm. years ago, right? That is not a guaranteed indicator that three years later they're going to be at the same fitness level that they were when they passed the CPAT. It's not a test that's refreshed. It's not something that they have to retake and pass as an entrance or a higher requirement. It is purely used as a screening requirement. So we could still face the situation where somebody passed a CPAT, which was a, a validated test, and have them come in two, three years later and be unable to perform the tasks that are required of them during their training academy and be facing a performance decision, right? A, a probationary um, dismissal decision. Okay. And that's not uncommon. Right. Yeah, it, it's not uncommon at all um, it, in, in in larger organizations. You know, when, when you're bringing on, you know, 20 firefighters at a time, that you know, X percent, you know, that, that they're just not successful during fire academy. Okay. Right. Just to, um, I don't know if this will help. Hopefully, it won't confuse the point. But you know, when we first started using the CPAP, we were just administering the test and. There were changes made to the administration requirements of that that added an orientation period, right, where folks had to come in and they were required, or you had to sign a waiver saying, I'm taking my chances attempting this test, even though I haven't taken advantage of all of the preparation things. That whole process was required because of the concerns about the impact on female candidates, right? And it was like to ensure that female candidates have an adequate or a, a competitive um, ability to pass this test in the same way that males do, they added these extra steps. Our concern is that particularly with folks who may have schedule conflicts, you know, what barriers to require them to come in two times for orientation, two times for practice tests, um, to have an adequate, to be adequately prepared for the test are barriers that we would like to eliminate, right? We think that that may be hampering some of our participation or folks seeing the process through. Um, and so that is one of our goals. Um, otherwise, they have to come in and sign a piece of paper that says, I know I didn't adequately prepare, but I'm going to try anyway. And so we're hopeful that this may be less daunting, may be less barriers to participation for um, some of our um, candidates that represent demographics and communities that we just haven't seen before. So we're, we're hoping for a balance here, right? We understand that we need to get some kind of baseline assessment of their fitness to be able to do the job, but we want to make sure that we're also doing it in a way that is as accessible and provides everyone the opportunity to prepare, understand, not have to be trained on how to pass the test. So that, that's really what we're hoping to accomplish through this. Chief, you're comfortable with those changes, correct? I am, yes, sir. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll make a motion to accept human resources recommendations for the changes to the entry level testing process mm -hmm. and to retest this position for the certification of the new hiring list. I second the motion. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Again, good information. <laughs> good. Oh, that was a really good discussion. Okay, now um, fire marshal appointment. Yes, it's, it's going to be a busy fall. So yeah. the final promotion process that we are recommending, this also is a little bit different than how things have been done in the past. Um, but we have been um, notified by the fire marshal that he intends to retire, and so we will need to uh, make an appointment to fill, the chief will need to make an appointment to fill that position. Um, because the fire marshal, or the fire marshal is a battalion chief level position, and that position has always been filled historically, either from, by appointing an existing battalion chief or appointing a candidate on the battalion chief promotional list because the job does function so differently from the other battalion chiefs who are, mm -hmm. are staffing 24-hour shifts, the chief made the great suggestion that maybe we do a separate process because we may have different groups of individuals who may be interested in the fire marshal as opposed to a shift battalion chief role or vice versa um, and they don't function in exactly the same way so maybe we should be assessing them a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So what we are proposing is Right now, just focusing on the on the battalion chief fire marshal assignment because that's where the pending vacancy is coming, and we are recommending um, 
a, that a process be conducted to create a certified promotional list specific to the battalion chief fire marshal assignment. <coughs> Um, and so we have laid that process out, what we are proposing, and it is essentially, it's similar to what we have done in the past at times with um, Captain. It's very similar to how we would do other kind of administrative type of management level positions um, within the city. And so what we are proposing is that we accept applications, that there will be a candidate questionnaire, which asks the candidates to respond to um, questions very specific to the position um, of fire chief. And then that those folks will then interview before a, a, an interview panel who will have access and will, you know, will circle back on their responses, will refer to those responses, will incorporate that into the interview, and that that process be used to create a promotional list specifically for the BC fire marshal um, position we will need to certify promotional lists for the other ranks we're not quite ready there there isn't the kind of immediate need for those lists quite yet um, but you will be getting a request to come in and visit with us again um, to do promotional processes for all of the other um, promotional ranks within the department including the bcs who um, are assigned to a 24-hour shift in my experience the fire marshal interacts with lots of different community individuals agencies and organizations do you have a, a process for getting some community input on uh, for this position um, what we are proposing is we have proposed a panel and if you want to direct uh, changes to that um, that certainly would be um, at your discretion you would have the ability to do that through whatever mm -hmm. you ultimately move to approve but we have um, <coughs> included Right now, the recommended interview team would be city department directors, division heads, other internal stakeholders, such as the folks in engineering or our inspection um, departments who do work closely with the fire marshal, um, and then a fire marshal from an outside fire department. Um, if you wanted to direct that we include other stakeholders in that panel, we would be happy to do that. What is, what is your reaction to that? Well, Chief, what do you I, I think it's I think it's a great idea. Um, you, you know, the, the, the fire marshal's position many times uh, it, it is the face of the fire department um, out inter, you know, interacting with the business community and, and, and our stakeholders. So, you know, I, I think we could we could emulate uh, some of the uh, interview practices from the police department, integrate those into to what we're trying to do. Yeah, and I think that might be useful. I think it might be a great source of uh, information to have, you know, just someone who interacts with the fire marshal to be involved in the process. Absolutely. What, what right. are fellow commissioners <laughs> weigh in? <laughs> okay. I, I would agree. I think it would be very beneficial. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head who would. Uh, what category of business or is there a specific business sure. would it be another inspection service a private inspection service or I, I don't know I'm just trying to think off the top of my head as to the best way to find a a stakeholder that's in the business community or someone from the university right, correct yeah we, we could certainly engage the uh, university's fire protection um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, person, uh, Bruce uh, McAvoy, I, mm -hmm. I, I work you know, with him quite frequently, and, and that might satisfy a big, big component of that. Um, you know, th th this is a big shift, you know, organizationally. Um, that the, the fire marshal is the fire marshal, mm -hmm. and they're not a bit. You know, yes, they have the rank of battalion chief, but you know, they're. It's they're, a very different job. It's a completely different job. And, and you know, also in the description that, that Karen put together for us is that you know they're no longer going to be a sworn police officer. Um, that, that's that's not 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 really needed for this position, and it's you know um, going away. But I could certainly engage the university and get a representative uh, on that group. Yeah, that even actually leads to the next question I had was about the dropping of the certification from IOEA is. Is the police department going to fill in the responsibility or that the 
reasons that that was in place in the first place? Well, it, it's, it's kind of a, it, it, an interesting um, historical holdover. You know, there, there, there are codes, there, there are chapters in Iowa Code, um, Chapter 100, that, that talks about fire investigation uh, and throughout the code that, that um, uh, re really allow fire investigators to, to do what they need to do. At the end of the day, you know, when, when you when you scrape it all down to the most basic level, um, your the, the fire marshal um, goes to the fire academy a number of years ago. Um, most certainly does not say current on law, um, and has the the rights and responsibilities of, of a sworn police officer. Um, so. It, most most agencies have have moved away from from that component uh, um, uh, some time ago. Um, for, for us, as, as a fire department, you know, if, if a, a a fire is caused due to some type of nefarious action, a crime has been committed, that that, that is a law enforcement issue, and and um, we we do have you know all the rights in the Iowa Code without being a sworn police officer. To, to you know enter a premise do an, do an investigation uh, all within the, the law as it stands um, irrespective of the um, uh, peace officer certification I think the question then becomes maybe what you're getting at is when you get to that stage where you guys have conducted an investigation and now charges need to be filed and I think what the chief is also saying is if that only happens once every 10 years and yeah. this person, it, we would likely be the ones to help out with the filing of the charges based upon an investigation that's conducted by the fire department. Absolutely, absolutely. And it would be my guess that the earlier that you get involved in that process would be the better. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's would be some communication. Sure. There. Yep. Okay. Other questions, comments? Does the certification of the battalion chief, fire marshal, and you may have hit this, I, uh, that does not automatically qualify them as a battalion chief? As an operational battalion chief? Yeah, I, I mean, it, there's going to be a separate test for the battalion chief if we have a candidate who passes the fire marshal, battalion chief fire marshal, does that automatically make them eligible for battalion chief? No. no. Okay. We'll have separate promotional lists for those. We'll make the distinction. So if a candidate's interested in both opportunities, they could just they could participate, be successful in both tests, and exist on both lists. Right. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions, Rick? Just any. Yeah. <laughs> 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 any more? I guess. No, so those I, are great questions. Yeah. The, the, the only question I, I last question is: Is there anybody on the commission that's in your, interested in participating in the interview process. I can do that. Yeah. That'd be great. Great. Sure. Awesome. Thank you for stepping up. Uh, any other? No, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are finished. This is your last chance. <laughs> okay. Um, I will move approval of this. I say. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any other issues or I, I've got a I've got a question before before we disband. Um, the commission was involved in proceedings involving two police officers, and at the conclusion, the basic message was, "We'll see you in court." And I wondered what the if, if lawsuits have actually been filed in those those two cases. I don't think officially they have. I think they're waiting for some uh, ruling from the district court. Um, I, I, not, not that I'm aware of. I, we've been in contact with some attorneys, but uh, I, I don't know the exact status of that. We're waiting. I think they're waiting on some things from the ILEA as well. Well, it struck me that both, probably shouldn't comment, but both cases were weak on the merits. So I was just wondering if they were actually in the legal process or not. So thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, any other questions, comments? Keep looking at me. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because you are the questioner in chief. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything from either of the chiefs? No, thank uh, you. I would just like to thank the commission for 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 um, you know being willing to, to kind of change the paradigm on what we're trying to do here um, with uh, with the fire department. I know it's uh, it represents uh, some significant change, and uh, and I'm truly appreciative. Thank you. 
I'd like to acknowledge the human resources Absolutely. people for doing a great job of outlining and describing it and being willing to change with the times. Yeah, thank you. We, we always appreciate the support of the commission and being open-minded about kind of reimagining some of our processes and how we've done things in the past. And um, so far, things have, have gone the way that we wanted them to. But we appreciate that you're willing to, to see how it goes and you know we'll adjust if necessary, if it, if it doesn't ultimately play out the way that we think it will. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a- I think our staffing, the, the situations across the country that specifically law enforcement is dealing with those staffing hasn't impacted us near as much. And that's really because of the commission's support of what HR is trying to do. And we really appreciate that. I, I truly believe we are the gold standard for the mm -hmm. process right now. And that's that's helped us enormously and really helped the community. So well, that's good to yeah. hear. It is good to hear. Yeah. Are you at full staff now? Or? We are three shy, uh, and we have a we have we have a conditional offer out that would make us two shy right now. So that's it, the high water mark. I was going to say that's life. really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. And I will say, I should have shared this as an example. Um, <coughs> with the frequency and the way that we're conducting the police testing now, I can. I can share with you as the staff member who has proctored the post test for both of those groups, um, for most of the, of the folks who participated in both of those groups. You know, we did have some candidates who came in and participated and did not take advantage of the the testing um, service that the city is willing to provide the the study guide materials, and they've come in and. Mm, were not successful, but not by much mm -hmm. um, on their first attempt. And having those small groups and being able to go back in and deliver the bad news, but be able to have an individual conversation and say, listen, did you do this? Because this could really help. And this is how these resources can help and be able to encourage them to don't give up. A lot of people have to try this more than once with a little preparation. This could, could play out very differently. And we've had folks who've come back and been able to come back in a relatively short period of time and have that second chance at that after having the opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one feedback with them and they've made it the second time and those are interactions that are not possible when you're bringing 60 to 75 people into a large group and then trying to hustle on to the next step so um, the groups are smaller but I think that our, our ability to interact with those candidates and encourage even the ones who don't make it on their first attempt to stick with it and go through I think we're reaping all kinds of rewards it, uh, that we were not able to mm -hmm. to do um, under the prior process so okay. there's Great. just there's we've seen good things happen through this process excellent yeah um, any other questions comments okay I'll entertain a motion to adjourn uh, so moved. How do I answer? You uh, just say second. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Forty-five minutes. Thank you so much. This was a marathon. <laughs> <laughs>